This is the reciprocal function. It produces the reciprocal of any number you plug into it. When you graph it on the Cartesian plane, it looks like this. If you take this function from 1 to infinity and revolve it around the x-axis, you will get a trumpet-like shape that gets thinner and thinner but never ends. This is called Gabriel's horn. What's interesting about Gabriel's horn is that it has an infinite surface area, but it also has a finite volume. What this implies is that if you tried to paint its entire surface, whether the inside or out, you would never have enough paint. However, if you wanted to fill the horn up with paint, you would have no problem. Before we discuss these two apparent contradictions, let's prove them mathematically using the surface area and volume integral formulas for solids of revolution. The volume looks much easier, so let's start with it. Remember, we started with the reciprocal function, which is 1 over x. So that'll be our f of x. And our limits are from 1 to infinity. We can square the 1 over x, then write it as x to the negative 2. Now, if we integrate using the power rule, we get negative x to the negative 1, which we can then rewrite as negative 1 over x. When we plug in the limits and subtract, we get this. 1 over infinity is 0, so we end up with pi. The volume of Gabriel's horn is pi. I think this is already a very neat result. So now, let's find the surface area. Again, the function is 1 over x, but this time we're also going to need its derivative, which you can use the power rule to get negative 1 over x squared. So let's plug these functions into the integral. And again, the limits are 1 to infinity. This is clearly a much more complicated integral than the one we had before. But if we think outside the box, we might find a different path to the solution. For the moment, let's just focus on this part of the integral. No matter what we plug in for x, when we square it, it'll become positive. But then, putting that under a negative 1 would make the inside of the parentheses negative. Squaring that would make another positive. And adding a positive number to 1 means that no matter what we plug in for x, this will always be greater than 1. Therefore, if we make another integral that's identical in every other way, except we replace the radical with a 1, we will know for certain that it's less than the original. So now we can tackle this much simpler integral and see if it tells us anything. The antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. Evaluated from 1 to infinity, we get this. The natural log of 1 is 0, and the natural log of infinity is infinity. So if this integral diverges, and the original one is even larger, then it must also diverge. So the surface area of Gabriel's horn has no limit, and yet its volume is finite. But how can this be? If I completely fill any container with paint, am I not also covering the entire inside surface? Well, we have to be very careful when discussing these properties and consider whether we're talking about real paint or mathematical paint. Real paint is not infinitely divisible. In other words, if you tried to fill the horn with it, there would eventually be a point where not even the paint molecules themselves would be able to pass. But mathematical paint would have no problem. It could go down forever and not only fill the horn, but also cover the entire surface. There is nothing that says an infinitely divisible paint cannot cover an infinite surface. Infinity divided by infinity is indeterminate. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If so, please take a second to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a pleasant day.